Good evening and welcome to Bath High School, where tonight WSN brings you a huge matchup in the Western Buckeye League this year. Ladies matchup tonight between the homestanding Bath Wild Kittens and the visiting Ottawa Glendorf Titans. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to be play by play. Alongside Evan Skilder. Evan, this has been a big game now for years and years and years, and the same is true this evening. Yeah, and I'm going to use a stat that you gave me before the game. I cannot take credit for this, folks, <laughs> but the last 11 WBL championships have involved one of these two teams. There might have been a few ties here and there throughout the last 11 years, but either way, one of these teams was involved in the title. And so it's really exciting to, to see these two teams, two 11-win teams on the season. They're great, uh, and, a, and a lot of really good basketball will be played tonight. Evan, let's look at the visitors tonight, the Lady Titans from Ottawa Glendor. Troy Yance team comes in 11-2. They are 4-0 in the Western Buckeye League, the only undefeated in the conference. What, what can we expect from them this evening? Yeah, well, those two losses you mentioned were to Liberty Benton and Toledo Christian, two very, very good teams in Northwest Ohio. And this is a really balanced team. Defensively, they're going to run you up and down the court. They're going to pressure you high. They're going to make this a game where it's going to be basically a track meet, right? So Bath's really going to have to handle that pressure. Offensively, this is a team where they don't have anyone that averages more than 10 points a game. It's a very balanced Balanced offensive scoring effort. Caitlin Kimmett, 7.2. Caitlin Grothaus, 8.6. Katie Kaufman, 9.5. Carson Erford, 8.5. I mean, look down the list, and everyone is scoring buckets. So it's a very unselfish team. You know what that means, Mark? They're really tough to guard. They really are. Let's go through their starting lineup. Uh, number three is Carson Erford, 5'7", freshman, averaging eight and a half points a game. Number 12 is Lily Hazelman, 5'4", senior, averaging 3.8. Number 22 is Kaylin Grothaus, 5'5", sophomore, 8.6. Number 32 is Caitlin Kimmett. She is a 5'10 sophomore at 7.2. And number 34 is Katie Kaufman. She is a 6-foot junior, averaging 9.5 points per game. Greg Mock's team, Bath Wild Kittens, they come in tonight 11-1. That one loss makes them 3-1 in the conference. That was to Elida last week, so they're actually a game down to the Lady Titans this evening. What can we expect from Coach Mock's team? Well, scoring-wise, it's a three-headed monster. Claire Faust, Ann Oliver, and Elena Oliver all averaging double figures. But don't forget about the Clarks, right? Faith Clark, a great young guard that can handle the basketball, move it around. And then her sister, Rachel, such a fantastic guard. She can score as well. She can hit from outside. And she's really going to be the one that will have to carry the load offensively, getting the ball down the court against this tough pressure. So I'm really looking forward to see how Bath handles this full court press assuming that Ottawa does deploy that I, I assume they will but uh, it's a really good bath team they, they've been good for a long time coach Mock has got a great program here they're always reloading and there's a lot of size right there too you look at the Oliver sisters both over six foot and Claire Faust six one as well so they've got a lot of size that they can play with and a lot of different ways they can score as well as Ottawa let's match names and numbers with what Evan just gave you number two is Faith Clark she is a five two sophomore averaging 2.3 points per game Rachel Clark wears number 20. She's a 5'5 senior, averaging 7.3. Claire Faust wears number 22. 6'1 junior at 10.8 points per game. Number 32 is Ann Oliver, 6'0 junior, averaging 12.2. And sister Elena Oliver is number 33. She is a 6'0 senior, averaging 11.4 points per game. Our officiating crew tonight, well, you've heard these names before. John Derryberry, Steve Warren, and Jacob Russell. We have a huge matchup for you tonight on at WSN. It's the Bath Wild Kittens trying to catch up to Ottawa Glendorf. Ottawa Glendorf trying to put a nail in the Bath Wild Kittens coffin as far as the Western Buckeye League goes. And it's coming up next. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Bath High School, where tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's seamless spouting. Mark Shine and Evan Skillet are here. We've just had the starting lineups for both teams introduced, Evan, and pretty good crowd tonight on a Thursday night for ladies basketball. Rainy and not so nice outdoors. Still got a good crowd in here. Yeah, absolutely. we got some uh, little Wildcats ready to play at halftime, it looks like, uh, running around here in their uniforms. <laughs> so always brings out a couple extra families and really looking forward to seeing how this one starts. It, I really think that Bath's going to want to settle in early, right? Get a tip off or win the tip off. Even if they don't, just try to establish themselves offensively, run through some sets because, again, this Ottawa Glandorf team is going to want to push the pressure. Here's Jacob Russell, will toss the ball in the middle, Claire Faust and Katie Kaufman, and the ball goes to the Ottawa Glendor of Lady Titans. Pass goes on to the wing, this is Erford. Pass in their traditional 2-3 zone. We have a 1-2-2 that matches down into a 2-3. Erford goes baseline and gets cut off. 
There's that size you talked about as uh, Ann Oliver knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, and I like that defense. He said it kind of shifts to a 2-1-2 two, one, two, or 1-2-3. Or like, it just it does yeah. everything, right? Once yeah, the yeah. ball goes baseline, they kind of drop that top defender down to guard the basket. Pass out on top. This on top here. This is Caitlin Kimmett. And she finds Kaylin Grothaus in the corner. Now Hazelman. Bounce pass inside to the rim. That ball is stripped away by Ann Oliver. And immediate pressure. Who hit it out of bounds? It will stay with the bath. Radio Wild, Wild Kittens. And there's that pressure we talked about. They're going to guard the full length of the court. Here they come. And it looks like it's going to be man-to-man -man as well. And the, the trouble that Bath might run into is the fact that they don't have a ton of depth, right? If you're going to push the pace like Ottawa Glendorf will, the, those guards are going to get tired bringing the ball up, and there's not really a ton of Wildcat depth on the bench to come in and fill in when those two need a rest. Ann Oliver, Rachel Clark, skip pass. This will be Ann Oliver bounces around, stays in play, and Elaine Oliver tries to score. Good defense inside by Carson Erford. They'll come the other way with Hazelman. Yeah, that was 5-6, boxing out six foot to get that rebound. That was well done. Baseline jumper. We're going to get our first foul of the game as Caitlin Kennett was headed to the rim. That will go against Ann Oliver. Kimmett's a 63% free throw shooter this season. She did a really nice job there getting the defender in the air. And even though the shot was a little off balance, she knew how to draw that contact and get to the line. Makes that first free throw. You were talking about depth, but you also pointed out to me that uh, Chloe Glenn is not here tonight for the Ottawa Glender Lady Titans. 5'10 senior. And she's a player that's been battling injuries yes, throughout yeah. her career, and she's a tremendous player. I mean, you look at the roster or the stats, she's played seven games, uh, but she averages uh, right around 10 points a game as well. So uh, a big gap in the Ottawa Glendorf roster. Here's Elena Oliver and then Rachel Clark. Hazelman doing what Lily Hazelman does best, and that's harass. Yeah, Lily Hazelman is a bulldog. She works so hard offensively and defensively. You can see two knee braces on. She's battled injuries throughout her career. Here's Kaylin Grothaus will get the first Lady Titan foul. I like her rocking the red shoes as well. A little like uncanny, that. just yeah. going against the grain. <laughs> Rachel Clark looks, 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 and has to lob it out on top. Ton Elaine of, Oliver. Ton of physicality already right there. You saw Ann Oliver get kind of shoved out of bounds. Oh, and turnover is miscommunication between Rachel Clark and Faith Clark. It sails out of bounds 2-0 early on. You saw the Titans on there. Second offensive possession, do a nice job just moving the ball around. Against this zone, I think if if you don't have a shot, you don't have to take it. That's a good open shot Three, there. Erfer, nope, rebound inside, and put back will go to Caitlin Kimmett. She's got four early points. Nice job, job crashing right there. What that zone sometimes does is leave a lot of gaps for the offense to crash the boards and get an offensive put back right there. you got to turn around. you got to get a body on somebody, box out, and grab the rebound. Erfau surrounded inside. Oliver in the rim, but a shot will be blocked, and that will go to Caitlin Kimmett. Our free throw shooting tonight is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and in Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. A couple of subs in the game as we expected. Number 24 is Micah Aldridge, and also in is number 23, and that's Emma Brinkman. Brinkman's a 5'7 senior. Mike Aldridge, 5'8 junior, as both free throws go down. Two very good athletes coming in off the bench for the Titans. See right there, you see the, the bottom defender came all the way to the top trying to keep Ottawa Glandor from moving the ball around the perimeter. Now right there, as soon as it goes corner, she drops down to the baseline. As soon as that ball passes the free throw line extended, uh, you'll see uh, Elena Oliver drop down into making it a 2-3. So it looks odd guard zone until the ball goes below the free throw line extended. Nice pass inside and a finish inside. Katie Kaufman's in the books. And that's exactly how you attack this zone. You have to attack the paint, get that center defender to come up just a little bit, drop it off, and an easy layup. I really like that play. 6-2 early on for Ottawa Glandorf. We played three minutes here. Here's Faith Clark. 
And she picks it up and then will lose the basketball. Here's a pass ahead, but it's stolen. Who hit it out of bounds? It will go to... I think it's going to stay with Ottawa Glandorf, is it? It is, it yeah. Signal, he, he yelled blue ball, <laughs> but uh, didn't point either way. Good call there. And good pressure defensively from the Titans to force that turnover. I'll tell you what, as soon as you pick up the ball and lose your dribble, you are going to have a defender or two in your face. It's going to be tough. Two subs back in the game. This is one of them right here, Hazelman. So all five Lady Titans have had a break in the first three and a half minutes of the game. This is more of a traditional 2-3 now with Faust in the center. Good pressure from Faith Clark. And penetration dribble, a little runner in the lane, will bounce around and fall in for Caitlin Kimmett. Average is 7.2 on the season. She's got six in the first four minutes of this one. Yeah, you can't have that. That's the death of his own defense right there, just letting penetration go right through the middle, right to the basket, and an easy layup. And Oliver looks inside to Faust and can't get it there. Rachel Clark thought about pulling the trigger. And now works the lane, and Rachel Clark's, Clark's scoop shot won't roll. Who hit it out of bounds? It will go to Wild Kittens. Here comes Erford back in the game, along with Kalen Grothaus. Think the Erford family sees any basketball games? Goodness. <laughs> Saw Kelsey down there somewhere in the bleachers watching. Of course, brother will be on WOSN on Saturday night, the game they play with Lima Senior. Good turnout from the, the boys basketball team from Ottawa Glandorf. Bad weather, but pretty much the whole team out here. Over dribble, stolen. Here goes Grothaus length to the floor. Crafts to Hazelman, won't go. Rebound. Back up, nope, and banged around. Somebody from the Wild Kitten had to hand on the ball and got hit on the arm. That will go to Carson Erford. I know that layup was no good, but I really like what Kaylin Grothaus did right there. Her and Hazelman were running two-on-one against the defender. She didn't even look at Hazelman one time, just dropped the pass off as soon as they got to the basket. That had to keep, or that meant that the defender had to stay honest. There's a steal from behind by Michael Aldridge. The pass ahead to Hazelman, and she traveled with the basketball. That's a tough one. Looked like the ball might have been hit right there, but I like the, the football pass from the opposite side of the field. Looked like Nikola Jokic out there throwing a full-court pass. Look, look, pass inbound, Elena Oliver. Elena picks it up and is immediately harassed. And we're going to get a held ball that will stay with the Wild Kittens. Here comes Katie Kaufman back in the game. Same story right there. Picked up the dribble and ran right into trouble. Looks like a contact came out as well. Oh, I like that. Back in the day, we always used to fake losing the contact so you could get Slow a Slow things yeah. down a little bit. <laughs> in fact, there was a time period where you actually had to put the names of the people in your scorebook who had contact lenses. So, Because guys who didn't win to wear them were faking losing them. <laughs> <laughs> the Mark Shine special. Oh, I always made sure I had some guys in the scorebook who, who were contact lens wearers, even if they weren't. <laughs> I don't think that was the case here, though. I think she actually lost it and got it back. So let's, let's play. Here's Clark coming off a screen high. And Oliver inside, doubled up. And stays there as it was knocked out of bounds by Kaylin Grothaus. Five minutes into this one. It's 8-2, Ottawa Glandorf. The one thing about Faith Clark, she does a lot of things really well, but she doesn't score a ton of points. And so a lot of times the defense can kind of sag back, and right there she entered it into the post, and the defense collapsed and knocked it away. Spin move into the lane. We'll put two points on the board for Ann Oliver. She has all four of the Wild Kitten points. Yeah, Ann has such nice touch around the basket. Nice little turn baby hook right there, right in. I really like that shot. Good defense from Faith Clark up top. Headed to the basket and going up and no call. Gets her own rebound and put back. Caitlin Kimmett's got eight and a quarter. That's good control from Kimmett. Absorbed some contact. Missed the first shot but was right there for the rebound. And of course if the defender falls over it makes it a little easier. Well the rebound goes to the person who gets off the floor fastest. And that's what she did at that particular point. That ball's hit out of bounds by Hazelman. This will bring Emma Brinkman back into the game. 
talked about the youth of this team. Lily Hazelman, the only senior starter. Emma Brinkman just checked in. She's a senior as well, but basically everyone else for this Titans team. A lob pass and a finish at the rim. That will go to Ann Oliver. She has all six of the points now for the Wild Kittens. The going zone goes to the traditional 2-3. Rachel Clark tips it loose, and Claire Faust picks it up. You can see the Wildcats starting to settle in just a little bit, offensively moving the ball around nicely, getting some good looks. Rachel Clark. Look at Hazelman work up top. Good job by Clark keeping the ball. This is Faith Clark. She's being harassed by Kaylin Grothaus. Good patient possession here. This is Elena Oliver. They've done a really nice job with Claire Faust. They cannot get the ball inside to her. Here's a three that'll go up. Nope. Rebound. Hazelman. Three on three the other way. She got it and went so hard the other way. I really like that transition game. Under a minute to go. Here's a pass inside. Hazelman's going to end up with it on the baseline, however. The length for Bath is making it really tough for the Titans to get inside and get any good looks. Until as soon as they get around that first line of defense and near the block or the paint, there's a bunch of really tall, lengthy players there. To nice guard pass the rim. inside. Unable to finish, however, inside was Katie Kaufman. And Bass survived one. Half a minute to go. Here's a long pass ahead. Here's Faust. Claire spins into the lane and a wild shot will not score. Here comes Kaufman the other way. And who hit that one out of bounds? This will be the first bath substitution in the game. It'll be Kelsey Carlson, a 5'8 freshman, wears number 23. Had the appearance that Ann Oliver was a bit winded. Worked real hard this quarter. Yeah, it's been a tough one for sure. That pressure has really pushed the pace. But again, the last two possessions, or last three even, it's been really nice to see Bath settle in and run through some Strip offensive loose. sets. Here's Rachel Clark trying to get loose to go the length of the floor. Rachel spin move mm -hmm. and scores. Rachel Clark has a basket, and that will make it a 10-8 lead at the quarter for the Ottawa Vanderbilt Lady Titans. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. Today's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. Last four points of the quarter went to the Bath Wild Kittens as they trail 10-8 after one, Evan. Yeah, they did a really nice job settling in offensively and defensively. We talked about it right before the break. They were running through some sets, having some longer extended offensive possessions. And then defensively, the three inside at the bottom of this zone have done a really nice job protecting the rim lately. Doubled up on the baseline against that size. Caitlin Kimmett had eight in the opening quarter. Six for Ann Oliver to lead their teams in scoring. Bounce pass inside, stolen. Here's Rachel Clark the other way. Good transition defense right there from Aldridge. Elaine Oliver, baseline jumper, ties it up. Elaine is in the books. And back to the 2-3 zone they go. And right to the rim and finishing with the left hand and a nice move is Michael Altridge. It's a good job. Rare good look at the basket for Ottawa. Just a little back door, got behind the defender. A good find. Rachel Clark gives it up. This will be a three by Elena Oliver, and she splashed that one. Her 20th of the year for Elena. Pass first lead, 13-12. Same move as the last time, same result as the last time as Aldridge finishes. Again, just nice job moving off the ball from Micah Aldrich, going in behind the defender. As soon as the defender's head turned to look at the ball, Aldrich was gone and got another good look at the basket, but I really like that possession at the other end. Rachel Clark's runner bounces out. It's tipped by Faust and will go to Ottawa Glandor. Rachel Clark's doing a really nice job in the last few minutes of action, getting the ball inside the paint. She's attacking her defender and she's drawing help. We saw the three from Oliver, a result of Clark getting inside and drawing that defender in. And right there, another nice job getting in the paint. Didn't make the shot, but she's still doing a great job. 2-2-1 two, two, zone press from the Wild Kittens here to open up the quarter, but Hazelman was able to break through that. 
Aldridge wanted to go baseline. Her teammate was down there instead. And we're going to get what? Held ball. That will go to bat. It's the length we talked about. And as soon as that ball goes inside, there are two or three six-footers with their arms up, making it really tough to get any good looks. That was Katie Kaufman who got surrounded down inside. This will bring number 30, Carly Brinkman, into the game for the first time. And also in, back in, will be Kelsey Carlson, and she's going to give Elena Oliver a break. So OG has played eight. The Wild Kittens have played six. Doubled up on Rachel Clark, and... Greg Mock takes our first time out of the basketball game. 6.16 to go, Ottawa by one. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSA. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 on Roku, Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Wildcats trying to save a, a, a turnover right there. Mark, what do you use for your cable? Uh, I don't know. It's Roku, just so you know. No, just, it's Roku. No, it's we not. Gotta get, no, we got to get no, with the action no, no, here. No, 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 no. Get no, with no. the action here. You've got everyone okay. laughing up here. And next you're going to tell me it's Halo and not Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. It's uh, Rachel Clark looking to come off a screen. Wildcats were head just briefly, and then Altridge scored again. And hence the, the lead. Bath just told the first time out. Faust surrounded in the middle and kicks it out. Tried to repost, couldn't get it down inside to her. Baseline jumper, a little left handed shot won't fall. And the rebound comes down to Katie Kaufman. Still a good possession for Bath. They move the ball around. They get, they're getting kind of settled against this defense. Still tough to get good looks, but that's going to be the case for both teams tonight. I'm sure it's Roku. I'm sure. I'm sure. All right. Hazelman to the basket. Oh, she overshot it, but right there on the backside, the rebound is Katie Kaufman. Points three and four for her. Rachel Clark into the lane. This is Faith Clark. One to three, but she got covered up too quickly. Again, the Clarks just do such a nice job handling the ball against pressure. This is Faith Clark for three out of the corner. Overshoots it to Hazelman, and she throws it ahead. Erford, and the ball goes out to Carly Brinkman, and then skip pass around. Sister Emma with that one, and it's tripped loose, and Erford dives on it. Pass inside, and OG hustles himself. Nope, she missed it. I thought they hustled himself right into a basket, and then Katie Coffin wasn't able to secure the ball strongly enough to score. That foul will go to Lily Hazelman, her first, team's third. Here comes Caitlin Kimmett back in the game, along with Caitlin Grothaus. And you see how frequently the Titans substitute. They yes. like to rotate players in and out, and we talked about it already, but Bath just doesn't have that luxury. So that'll be an interesting thing to watch going forward as this game wears on. Can Bath keep their legs and stay in it? Bath back to their starting lineup. Each of the Oliver sisters have had a break for just moments in the game. Other than that, it's been starters all the way for them. High post pass. This is Ann Oliver. Claire Faust. Good patience. Rachel Clark comes off a screen. Boy, the defense is good right now. It's, it's incredible. I mean, they Faust is doubled up, and her shot's blocked out of bounds by Katie Kaufman. Bath is trying to set screens up top. They're setting screens off ball, but these Titans are just doing such a great job fighting through and making sure they're not leaving any space for this offense to work. And of course, as soon as it goes inside, the length of Kaufman able to knock that away. Mike Aldridge, Carson Erford back in the game. Elaine Oliver works the lane. A little runner in the rain for her, and it rolls in for her. She's got seven all in the quarter. Good footwork right there inside by Oliver. Just a couple little fakes, couple, couple little shuffles, and a good look. 
And what we got? We're going to get a travel that will go against Caitlin Kimmett. Rachel Clark got her hands on the ball initially. And with three and a half to go here in quarter number two. OG with a single point lead. This is Rachel Clark. Rachel Clark into the lane and got a blocking foul that will be called. Oh, jump ball. Held ball. Held possession. Missed, yeah. Good defensive play. I missed the signal momentarily. Thank you. Here's the 2 2 1 press. They tried to employ it a couple times. It was a nice animated call from Mr. Derryberry over there. Faith Clark tips the ball out of bounds. This will bring Lily Hazelman back into the game. You know, uh, Evan, in an era when uh, we specialize, we play one sport and that's it. You look at these ladies out on the floor and how many of them are playing two and three sports in, in their career. You know, it's just really good to see them. Take advantage of all, every opportunity you have. And Rachel Kraft, Clark runs out and gets a basket. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you know, these Titans made a deep run twice in a row to the uh, state final in soccer, yep. and most of these girls were on that soccer team. If not, they were on a volleyball, volleyball team that team, had yep. a lot of success. And, of course, the Bath Girls soccer program has been tremendous over the years, and the volleyball team, not bad either. So well, the Olivers have been to the state tournament twice in, in tennis, and we're going to get a Troy Yant timeout. 2.38 to go. Bath has a single-point lead here in quarter number two. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTOW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day, and you can visit WTLW.com. Beth Watkins with a single point lead. Coach Ant takes his first time out. Here's a pass ahead to Clark. She and Hazelman, and a little short jumper that will go banked in. Rachel Clark with points five and six puts the lead to three coming out of the timeout. We've seen a couple times in transition where she gets to a point where she stops and the defender runs by her. She just kind of spins and takes a nice controlled jumper. And she's done a really nice job keeping her team in this game, not just by scoring, but by handling the basketball and playing great perimeter defense. Smothered on the baseline was Erford, and we're going to get a held ball, I think it is. Wild kitten basketball. It's good discipline by the Bath defense right there. Both of the bigs underneath just stood straight up right there, didn't reach, didn't put their arms down, and were able to knock that ball away and ultimately get a grip. You know, though, in the time period of uh, many years ago, you never let a player go baseline. Now you let them go baseline, you smother them behind yep. the backboard down there with your size. Here's Clark. She finds Elena Oliver. Here's the lob inside, and that's great help defense. Good job by Kaitlin Grothaus. Almost, almost got a call there. Hazelman goes inside, and once again, and let's see, so the disagreement who hit the ball out of bounds. And our officiating crew is discussing things a little bit. Let's see what the call is. It's going to stay with Ottawa Glandorf. Well, sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, every time, everyone has a different angle. And, and the fishing crew got together and said, that's where it belongs. We'll stay with that. Here's Hazelman, minute and a half to go, opening half. Two, three zone this time. Erford. Now in the corner to Kimmett. And the ball is tipped loose and taken away by Elena Oliver. Good hand by Oliver. Here's Ann Oliver. Her sister's in the corner saying, throw me the ball. Faith Clark. Good pressure defense, and the foul is going to go against Emma Brinkman. She becomes the fifth. They 
Sydney Titan to pick up a single foul here in the opening half. Bath only has one team foul. That goes to Ann Oliver. Look, look, here's the pass for Rachel Clark. If they can get a nice long possession here, they'll be so happy. Get, getting to the locker room at halftime with a lead. That lost the basketball on a pass that was unable to be secured on the baseline. Here comes Grothaus. Then Erford, Carson looks the defense over. This could be last shot time for the Lady Titans. Jones pushed out a bit on the floor. They've overloaded the left side. Pull up jumper, Erford scores. Carson Erford's first basket of the game. Clark gets a throw from midcourt and Ooh. bounces it off the front rim. We've got 16 minutes in the book, just what we thought it was going to be. The Bath Wildkittens will have a one-point lead at half. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Bath High School. Our free throw sponsor tonight has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Just 45 seconds away from the beginning of half number two. Bath is led in scoring by Elena Holliver. Elena had all seven of her points in quarter number two. Sister had six in the opening quarter. Rachel Clark has six. There's only three. Wild Kittens have scored. Caitlin Kimmett has eight. All those in the first quarter to lead Ottawa Glendorf. Four from Katie Kaufman. Four from Mike Aldridge. Two from Carson Erford. Well, what do you think of Evans? We head into half number two. Well, we haven't seen may well, maybe one or two really good looks from both teams, but these defenses have been so tough to work against. In fact, I'm surprised we have 19 and 18 <laughs> points for both these teams because points have been tough to come by. This second half, I'm watching to see who keeps their legs, right? It's been great for Ottawa to be able to substitute and rotate players in. Bath looked a little bit gassed going into the halftime locker room. So they're really going to want to have some longer possessions. They're wanna, going to want to settle in and uh, take some breaks on offense because I promise you, you cannot take any breaks on defense against this team. Bath has quarter scores of 8 and 11. Ottawa Glendor quarter scores of 10 and 8. And it will be Lady Titan basketball to start quarter number 3. This is Carson Erford on top. And she pit pitches the ball to the corner to Caitlin Kimmett. Lily Hazelman. And collapsed in the middle. And we're going to get a turnover to begin the second half as we play 19 seconds. Hey, while we got a minute, Gretchen Pritchard won 462 basketball games here in her career at Bath High School. Just under 80%. Greg Mock. He has won, um, well, let's just say 458. Mm. Between the two of them, two coaches, first of all, in 50 years of high school basketball, 920 wins between the two of them. Here's Clark for three. Short, tracked down in the corner by Katie Kaufman. Yeah, but you kind of need to take a shot like that. When you get an open look on the perimeter, those are few and far between, and, and Clark's a really good shooter as well. So I like that she took that shot. If you get an open look, I mean, this game's going to come down to maybe just a few points on either side. So if you can get a couple threes in the second half, we only saw one go in the first half, uh, you could find some separation that you need. That steal was made by Ann Oliver as we played a minute. Without score. Rachel Clark. This is Claire Faust. Pass inside. Defense swarms inside and pitch out. Faith Clark. Rachel. It's a lot of space. It's a long three. That one will hit bottom of the net. Was that Elaine Oliver? It was. Her second three this evening. She's got 10 in the game. The first player to be in double figures. And Bass biggest lead at four. Yeah, I'm not sure why they gave her so much space there in the corner. She's already hit one, like you said. And right there, like we said, the last possession, if you get an open look, take it. And she had plenty of space to put that in. 21, three balls on the season for her. Hazelman into the lane. And here's a runner inside, and we're going to get a foul that will take place. Who gets that call? It goes to Claire Faust, her first. 
Some free throws this evening. Our free throws are sponsored by Lemus Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and in Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. What's your favorite thing to get at Lee's? Um, the chicken sandwich, quite honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever had one of the pot pies? I have not. Mm. They're delicious. Caitlin Kimmett makes that free throw, and that one as well. She's four for four from the free throw line. She becomes a double-figure scorer tonight. And leads back to two. Ann Oliver. And we're going to get a blocking foul that will go against Caitlin Kimmett. And Caitlin becomes the first player in the game with two fouls. We've talked a lot about the depth for Bath. What we haven't mentioned is that Lexi Renner, a really, really good player, uh, has been here for four years. She's a senior. She's out with another knee injury. It's been tough to see all those injuries that she's suffered. We wish her the best. But Lexi Renner is a fantastic player and would be a really good piece for Bath. Um, but again, unfortunately suffering from those injuries. Thoughts with her, as always. You want to talk about a classy move, and that is Coach Mock has put her on her his roster and puts her in a scorebook every game. Yeah. And she will let her this year, which I think is a great thing. Four-year letterman, and, and I, to give her that opportunity because of her support for the program, I, I think that's outstanding. It's absolutely right. A testament to her leadership yep. throughout the years. And what do we got? Something's loose on the floor. Tom Derry Bray hands it to the athletic director here, Kristen Holt. And do we... Be back to play here. Ottawa Glendorf with a chance to tie, perhaps take a lead. They have not made a three ball yet today. Pass inside, and as so often happens, they swarm, but then Kimmick, or Kaufman gets some room to work and can't finish. Yeah, that was an interesting look because as soon as they gave it to her, they collapsed like they have, yeah. and then they all dropped off except for one, but still great defense. Oliver's three bounces around, Faust rebounds. Claire goes baseline and she's gonna try and works and works and works and we're gonna get a three second call. No, at that point they had to call something, Mark. Yeah. Here comes, uh, let's see, we bring back in Emma Brinkman, Mike Aldridge enter. Yeah. You know, the rule book actually says as long as you're making an effort to put the ball on the rim, you can stay in there as long as you want. And she was looking to make a pass. That's when the call mm. came from. It is three seconds, but if you are actually making an effort to get the ball to the rim, you can stay longer than that. The rule book expert. Oh, my. Slapped out of bounds on that block by Ann Oliver. What do the rules say about that one? That's called, uh, you get to take the ball out of bounds, but I just blocked the shot. <laughs> And in their 2-3 zone, which they've been in for uh, probably the majority of the basketball game. They started with some odd guard stuff early. It's Hazelman working inside. Nice pass. And the ball rolls around and won't fall for Aldridge. Scrap for the rebound. Hazelman's on the floor. She along with Claire, uh, Anna, Elena Oliver down there. And this time it will stay with the Lady Titans. Good off-ball movement once again for Micah Aldrich. We've seen that a couple times from her tonight, recognizing when she has a lane to run to the hoop. And right there, she got the ball. Didn't finish it, but again, she's such a threat off the ball. If you turn your back as a defender, she's going to go by you and find some space. Looking, looking. Aldrich finally pitches it into Hazelman, and she can't control it. And OG gets it again. There's a nice pass. And the finish inside by Micah Aldrich. She has six. Hazelman's on the ground again. Here she comes. And they just scrapped their way into that one, didn't they? Here's a foul out front. That one will go. Mike Aldridge gets her first foul. Yeah, and that foul actually helps the Titans because Lily Hazelman was trailing the play after diving for a steal and missing it. So that foul slows things down and lets them set themselves up defensively. Here's Rachel Clark doubled up for a moment. Let's say she and Hazelman are getting to know each other well this evening. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hazelman there goes on the again. floor again. How about that play? Here's the pass ahead. And uh, Kaufman has it. A little bit frantic play here for a moment. And Kaufman gets it stripped loose into the corner. Gets it back again. It goes up left hand and finishes. Katie Kaufman with a basket in each quarter and has an and one opportunity with a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. 
Kaufman did a nice job getting good position right there. She pinned her defender underneath the basket and a little bit high, so when she got that ball, she had plenty of space to spin to the basket. Now, Mark, I want to talk about the offense for the Titans. They've been trying to get the ball inside, but we talk about how all those bigs are in there with their arms up. If they get the ball to the corner, they pull out one of those bigs from the paint, and then they can enter into the post and have a 1v1. I wonder if Ottawa will kind of shift to getting that ball to the corner and spreading out that bottom three. Missed free throw is the first missed free throw of the basketball game this evening. OG with a two-point lead. Wildcat and Kittens with just three points here in the quarter. We played more than four minutes, and now we're going to get a baseline foul as Elena Oliver was headed to the glass, and she will be fouled by, looks like Emma Brinkman. She becomes a two-foul person in the game. Here comes Caitlin Kimmett. Rachel Clark looks and has to lob it out on top. Ann Oliver working the lane. Hazelman to help and a spin move, but she left it short. And a good solid rebound inside by Michael Aldridge. Good look right there. Just a tough miss. That'll happen, but I really like the footwork from Oliver. Mm -hmm. Getting some space on the right side, spinning away from the double team. Hazelman on top. Erford into the lane, but it's poked loose to Rachel Clark. She's one on three and goes to the rim and scores. Rachel Clark with point seven and eight. That was a nice little gather, little advanced gather right around the rim. Erford. On video games, you hit X or uh, square twice right there to get that advanced gather. It's a nice move. As Kaufman passes inside, and with the defensive pressure that came from Ann Oliver, the ball gets fumbled out of bounds. This will bring Kalen Grothaus back into the game. Titans have been pretty insistent on getting the ball to the high post against this zone, and I understand that that's really the traditional way to attack a zone, but they've not done a very good job once they've gotten the ball there, finding good looks. So again, I wonder if they're going to try to switch their offense a little bit here toward the end of the third quarter into the fourth. Really Hazel would just come out of the game. I, I would not take her out of the game because I think she'd hit me. <laughs> she wants to. She is such a competitive person. She wants to stay in the game, and I'm going to bet that refs won't take her on the sideline very long. We're tied at 24, and turnover. All the way inside, corner jumper, Erford, and she nailed a three. She's got 11 of those on the season. That's the first Titan three of the evening. Good things are happening when they get the ball to the corner. And with 1.51 to go in the third, Bath takes a timeout. OG by three. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. The free WSN Scores app is the latest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores in WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. After the three ball by Carson Erford, her points three, four, and five for her this evening, and her team taking a three-point lead, Greg Mock takes his tech timeout. It's a good timeout as well. You want your team to kind of settle down a little bit. Titans have put together a few nice offensive possessions. It's been a 9-5 to five quarter in favor of the Lady Titans. Faith Clark in the corner. And she will carry the basketball. Yeah, just got away from her a little bit. That's all right. Just got to recover, have a good defensive possession. Pretty good defensive pressure. Here comes Carly Brinkman back in the game. She replaces Michael Aldridge, who sits down with six points. Kaelin Grothaus runs the point with Lily Hazelman on the bench. Pass inside. Here's Erford. Bounce passes inside. Ooh. There's a three ball that bounces around. Scramble for the rebound. Two Titans and a Wild Kitten, and it goes off. Uh, looks like OG. Comes Rachel Clark. 
75 seconds to go in quarter three. Got a five count on. She gets her shoulders past her. There's a three out of the corner. Missed that one. Rebound on the backside to Grothaus. Here comes Kalen. Bounce pass, and that's a, a nice transition basket for Carly Brinkman. Set up by the good pass from Kalen Grothaus. Yeah, it's a sophomore running transition right there. Nice little cross to her left. Got the defense to kind of shift over, and then just dumped it off around a defender. I really like what she did right there. Manipulating the defense in transition on the move. That's big time. It's a five-point lead, Titans. And their defensive pressure has picked up a bit. Here's Faith Clark. And Rachel Clark. OG trying to maintain a undefeated conference record and the you know, foul on the sideline. That goes to, it's like Emma Brinkman who has three fouls now and will be immediately replaced by Katie Kaufman. How about the Kaufman family's legacy on the last oh. uh, last five years or so of Ottawa Glendorf basketball? That pass is stripped loose. It will stay, however, with Bath. 15.4 to go with the baseline out of bounds. Elaine Oliver in the corner. She's made a couple of threes from there, and it's the defensive pressure. Backing off of her again. Yep, and she picks up. That three missed everything. Rebound to Grothaus. Here they come again. Another pass ahead. How about that finish? Back-to-back -back transition baskets on great passes to Carly Brinkman. And we will head to the fourth with OG up by seven. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. A 13 to 5 quarter for the Lady Titans in the last two baskets in transition made a big difference. Yeah, it was a great pass ahead and an even better catch and finish. Uh, uh, that whole play right there was yes. really tough. It happened quickly and that really hurts Bath. This fourth quarter is going to be the toughest quarter they've played all night as the uh, stamina starts to wear off and it's going to be really tough and with a seven point deficit you're really going to want to try to spread this defense out and get some good looks early. Faith Clark under good pressure. Been that way all evening long and she eventually gets it to Ann Oliver. Ann works the lane and she will be fouled. That will be the fifth team foul. And the foul goes to Lily Hazelman, her second, team's fifth. Bath has just two team fouls in the second half. It's a lob out front to Faust. And pass inside. This is Ann Oliver for three. Rims out. Good strong rebound by Katie Kaufman. Good look from Oliver right there, though. Again, and Olivers are getting a lot of space on the perimeter. Or over penetration, and with that, and what are they going to get? Offensive foul as Ann Oliver gets called for that one, and guess who she ran over? Yep. Hazelman once again on the ground. Hazelman, yep. Nice job getting back very quickly. And again, I'm so impressed with how quick she is, not just getting down the court, but also laterally and defending. She's had so many injuries to her legs, but she works so, so hard. I mean, you never be able to tell. Bath moving up to trap some. Dribble right around that and good pass inside and a finish that time by Kaufman again. And the passing and ball handling skills right now that have been on display by Kalen Grothaus outstanding. The lead's at nine. And some tired legs up top on the defense, not able to stay in front of the defender, or the offensive player, excuse me, who got right into the lane. So work inside. This will be a three by Ann Oliver. That's short. And the rebound tracked down by the ever-present Kaylin Grothaus. She leads the break again. And that time she over-penetrated and lost control of the ball. Rachel Clark works. Kick out. Faith Clark for three. Big basket, Faith Clark. Her first of the night cuts the lead to six. That's her seventh made three of the season. Yeah, it's not really her game, but a big shot right there. 
Here's a three right back at you. The goal's out. Hazelman gets it. Titans will be content just to back out against this defense, get a nice long possession. Up six. Carson Erford. Grothaus pass inside and working hard and muscled up but unable to finish inside was Kaufman. Bath head the other way. Here's a pass to the corner. Elaine Oliver steps back three. Got it. Back to back threes. Brings the kittens back into it. They're trailed by three. That's a big one for her too. You could tell she kind of second guessed herself after missing a few but she still ended up taking that shot. That ball going in could really spark a run. That does a lot for your confidence when you see a ball hit the bottom of the net. Erford with a runner in the lane and a battle for the rebound. We're gonna get a held ball. That is Elena Oliver's third made three point field goal this evening. She leads all scores with 13. Boy, just when it looked like the bath was on the edge. And we're going to get a timeout. This one will go to Bath with 5.18 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer-supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com and click Donate. Bath takes their third time out, but they got it back to three. Yeah, good look from Oliver right there, spreading out the defense just a bit. And again, the more you hit from the perimeter, the more the defense has to come out, the more space you get inside. So a big hit right there, and we'll see if Bath can climb back into it. In what has been a very close basketball game, Bath has made four from the three-point line to just one for the Ottawa Glendor Titans. That one by Carson Erford. Bath has three team fouls. OG has five. Bath has two timeouts remaining. OG has four on the reset. Here's Erford to inbound. Into the basketball game was Emma Brinkman. Back to Erford in the corner. Erford in the middle. Turnaround jumper. And into the rebound hands of Oliver. And Elena immediately heads to her spot in the left-hand corner. And they're going to try to get her off a screen right here to get open. I bet you they don't give her a ton of space anymore, though. And the man defense this time. She's picked up by Michael Altridge. Actually, she's picked up by Emma Brinkman. Man situation. Clark trying to get around. Hazelman and cannot. Here's Ann Oliver. She dribbles inside and gets a shot up. Faust rebounds. She fights it back up. That won't go. And eventually the ball is secured by Caitlin Kimmick. Here comes Erford. A lane for her to drive right to the rim. And Carson Erford has her seventh point. Freshman Carson Erford with a big bucket off the glass. Good touch on that one. We saw a shot from Claire Faust at the other end. Faust still doesn't have a basket in this game. She averages 10. So definitely a frustrating night for her offensively, but she's done some good work defensively. Good defensive play in the corner by Emma Brinkman to get a steal. Titans by five, trying to extend that lead. Erford lines up a three. Oof. Bounces around and won't go, but on the backside rebound, who gets the foul? against the Titans. 24 is the number that goes up. Mike Aldridge has two, and that also becomes team foul six. So the Wild Kittens will be shooting free throws after this one. Bath has just three team fouls, and you might see them be very aggressive defensively because they can foul some, and it won't get uh, free throws out of it. One Brinkman replaces the other. Sister for sister. Five-point Titan lead. They are 4-0 in the Western Buckeye League. The only undefeated team in the conference. Bath is 3-1. Coming into tonight. Elaine Oliver trying to get loose from solid defense for Carly Brinkman and can't. Oh, 
Rachel Clark, Oliver for three out of the corner. Just a bit hard. And who hit that one out of bounds? Looks like it will stay with Bath as it went off of Mike Aldridge under some pressure. Yeah, she works hard too. She oh went boy. flying for that one. She's been on the floor a couple times. She very good player. Plays midfield for the soccer team, so she's all over the place a lot of stamina and a, a player that can just run all night. And Oliver. Pass inside is tipped out of bounds on a nice defensive play. Boy, Kaylin Grothaus has really had a tremendous second half at both ends of the floor. She does a nice job defensively just knowing what's going on with the offense. She, like, even right there, she could tell that pass was coming in and she shifted down and was able to knock it away. There's Claire Faust surrounded on the baseline. Her bounce pass ends up in the hands of one of the blue-shirted Titans. Under three to go and they're up five. Erford looks inside at Kaufman. And then they're going to reverse the basketball. Oh, bring it back to Erford. Good possession this time. Here's the baseline pass. Here's Kaufman inside. Boy, you got to like that possession and how it finished up with Katie Kaufman's points, 9 and 10. Yeah, it's another example. Getting the ball to the corner and getting... Them open inside for a 1v1 with a really good Kaufman. Transition basket, and they're going to get a foul. Good run out that time. That's kind of been the difference in how OG has scored here in half number two. It's the first one against Elena Oliver. And uh, we're going to get some free throws. Our free throw side are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and in Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So missed by Erford. We throw two to push the lead to eight. And she splashes that one dead center. Eight for her. Rachel Clark, her team needs points in a hurry. Rachel works inside. A little runner for her. Bounces around. Rebound secured by Carly Brinkman. And Coach Yant immediately says, slow it down. And Coach Mock yells, man to man. Hey, they're going to have to defend high and keep this. Ball's poked loose. Oliver Nerford going for it. And we get, what, timeout Ottawa Glandorf with 1.40 to go. Finish your thought there, Evan. Well, it's just tough right now for Bath to defend a team that moves the ball really well, and they're trying to come out and get the ball back down eight, but the Titans do such a great job taking care of it against pressure, and when you go out to man defense, that leaves a lot of time for, ba or for OG to get the ball inside to some of their bigs. Katie Kaufman has done a really nice job as of late. When she is 1v1, she is really tough to stop inside, so I would assume that as soon as the Titans can get the ball inside, they will. You mentioned uh, in our pregame tonight about the no single player averaging in double figures, but how balanced they were. I look at the score sheet here. Carson Erford has eight. Mike Aldridge has six. Ten for Caitlin Kimmett. Ten for Katie Kaufman. So there's your balance to see that they've had. And they move the ball around so well. Not, not one single player is worried about scoring themselves. They're just worried about getting some good looks on offense. And that's a testament to Coach Yant as well, right? Being able to build team chemistry, make sure everyone knows the most important thing, which is winning basketball games, not scoring, not getting your own stats. And so I, I'm really impressed with this team. And again, there's just so much consistency throughout the years for both of these programs and having such great players, but players that are unselfish. Let's see how bad plays this they have just four team fouls so they could be very aggressive should they choose and not put OG on the free throw line Titans look like somebody who's willing to take layups and free throws at this point here's Hazelman's pass to Kaufman calling for a foul now and there's one right there that will go to Faith Park for first team fifth pushes it down to 117 to go OG shoots 60% from the free throw line on the season. Caitlin Grothaus is at 82%. And there's Hazelman going inside. 
Faust is able to pick it up. There's Oliver on the baseline. Kaufman got to her in a hurry. Yeah, not giving her space anymore. And Oliver works in the lane under really good defense. She can't finish. And there's Hazelman that's going to get called for a foul as she dove into Elena Oliver. Lily now has three fouls. Anyone surprised to see her on the ground? Yeah, there's a surprise, isn't it? And it's one and one time for Bath. And uh, that puts at the free throw line Elena Oliver. 13 points in the game for her this evening. And under a minute, her team trails by eight critical free throws. Got that one, point 14 for her. Path has only been to the free throw line. This will be free throw number four for them this evening. Neither team has shot many free throws. That may change as Path starts to foul here to end this one. And back of the rim, bounces around. Rebound secured by Caitlin Kimmett. Try to get a steal here before it gets to the front court. It won't, so they'll probably foul. And there's a Rachel Clark foul, her first, and team sixth. Hazelman back in the game. She's a 67% free throw shooter. Erford shoots 61. And we've got a Greg Mock timeout with 51.2 to go. He will have one timeout remaining as his team trails 38-31. Well, what games have we got this weekend? Where were you at this weekend in our WSN schedule? Tomorrow I'll be at Shawnee, Wapak at Shawnee. I've got Saturday off a couple Bluffton University games, men and women doubleheader. But uh, looking forward to a great weekend of basketball in uh, our on WOSN. Of course, we've got a crew down at Fort Loramie for three different games. Yep. And where are you? Uh, big, uh, big one for you tomorrow. Uh, a big, a, a fun game and a great game. We have New Bremen will be at Marion Local, two teams near the top of the MAC. Coldwater's undefeated in the conference play, but those two teams are right there with them. But the, the key to that is we get to have a special night. We're bringing Mark Miller back from across the state of Ohio in the Canton area where he lives. He and I and Jerry Snodgrass will call this one together. We've tried to do a game together every year, and the COVID got us one year. Last year we got snowed out, and hopefully the weather will cooperate and let us do that game. That will air on Saturday, and that's always one of my favorite events of our year with uh, WSN. First of all, because of the quality of the game, and second, being with a couple of good friends. So looking forward to that one as well. We've got Lima Senior OG. We've got Lima Senior Finley this weekend. A lot of basketball in WOSN. Playing keep away are the Titans. And the Lady Titans looking to draw a foul. And instead, they're going to go inside. Kaufman can't finish, gets her own rebound. And that time, we'll fight it up and draw a foul that will put it in the free throw line for a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Like we said, as soon as the Titans could, they got it inside to their their big player, big scorer, 10 points so far tonight for Kaufman, as you said moments ago. She is a 0 for 1 this evening from the free throw line. Six foot junior. Going to have an interview with the winning coach when this one comes to an end, so stay with us for that. Point 11 for her. And the lead goes to eight. And Faust secures the rebound. Kittens need points in a hurry. Here's a pass ahead. Oliver gets a three look. That one's short. She tracks her own rebound down, and we get the held ball. Stay with the white team. Here comes uh, Michael Altridge into the game. And Katie Kaufman, who's played a really good game, is going to get some high fives from her teammates, coaching staff. Rachel Clark the inbound. And Oliver. You need to get a shot. I don't care if it's a good one, just put it Rachel in. Rachel Clark for three. Splash. We're going to keep it right here. That is her 15th three point field goal of the year. It's her 11th point of this evening. And with 14.5 to go, Coach Mock has taken his final timeout. And we'll cut it to 34 to 39. What questions do you have about life and about God, about things happening in our community or in our families? Get your answers when you watch Life Questions. Each week, four local pastors will discuss relevant topics and answer questions submitted by people just like you. Life Questions is on TV 44 Sundays at 1.30 and Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. And you can also find it online at WTLW.com. And I was going to read that ad about uh, 
WSN app, but I didn't want you to make fun of me because I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> Roku. Roku. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hey, Mark, I've, I've got to commend you, man. I, I, you, you going and, and having a broadcast tomorrow with Jerry Snodgrass and Mark and you know, I, I just think about how long, <laughs> I won't tell you how long, <laughs> yeah. but how long you've been doing uh, this. And I, I remember being in, in high school and being so excited when you'd show up and the WOSN crew would show up. You do such a great job. It's always such a pleasure to get to chat hoops with you. And obviously, this is this is hardly a job, right? We no, get to go no, watch no. hoops. This but. is way too much fun. And uh, to, to, yes, I've been very blessed with the opportunity to do this and uh, and see so many great games and be a part of so many, meet so many different people, mm. work with so many different guys. And I, I, it's a joy to watch young men and young women compete in, in sports, whether it be volleyball or basketball or whatever sports I get to do. It has been a blessing to me, and, I, and I'm just grateful that God has allowed me to do this. And hopefully we'll get to keep doing it for a while as Absolutely. that foul goes to Elena Oliver. And then the free throw is made by Carson Erford. That's point nine for her. So she can become a double-figure scorer if she can knock this one down. Bottoms out. Ten points for her. And Oliver from the volleyball line is short. And Elena went out of bounds to save it. And Ottawa Glandorf and Lady Titans are going to win this one. They won a JV game tonight, 36-15. So they got a lot of young girls on their varsity, and their JV team is undefeated. How about that? Here's the inbound pass. And this one will come to an end. The Ottawa Glandorf Titans will remain undefeated in Western Buckeye League play as they will take a 41-34 victory over the Bath Wild Kittens this evening. Evan and I will be back in just a moment. We're going to have an interview with uh, Coach Ant, and we're going to have a post-game show in just a moment. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Bath High School with a winning coach tonight, Troy Ant. Coach, when we talked to Scott Mag earlier, because Scott and I do a lot of games, he thought your depth would play out, and tonight that certainly was the case. Yeah, you know, we had hoped that the depth would maybe turn the tide a little earlier. Um, you know, they only go about six, seven deep. Um, but uh, uh, they're, they're pretty used to playing at that level depth. So they did a great job. Um, I thought finally that Carly Brinkman coming in off the bench really gave us a spark, got us some buckets. Um, Micah Aldrich, uh, not one of the, somebody we traditionally count on for offense. She's such a great defensive player, but she got loose and got us a couple layups. So, you know, you had those eight points up, and that's very much the difference in the game. So, you know, our depth, I guess, kind of won the game for us. Coach, you're really a very young basketball team. You only play two seniors with get much playing time at all. So you've really got a program going. You've got a lot of depth tonight and a lot of good young players. Well, yeah, you know, we would like to have those four seniors. Unfortunately, sure. two of them are out right now. Um, but, you know, uh, the, the tradition of the program in the last decade, I think we played young girls when they're ready. And, you know, Carson Erpert has definitely responded. Kaylin and Caitlin both responded last year. So, you know, it's Kind of the message before the game was, you know, I think we're going to be really good next year. <laughs> but we kind of owe it to the seniors to, to step up right now because with the two seniors out, we really need to, to kind of, you know, gloss over what we're, what we're losing in the lineup. And I thought the girls, they're, they're building that. You know, it's still kind of hard for a freshman to step into a role that is maybe, you know, you're basically subbing Chloe Glenn for Carson Erford. And, and it's tough for a freshman to step into a role that, that Chloe has been, you know, basically creating for four years. So, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with the young girls. We just need to keep getting better. You had a spell when uh, Caitlin Grothaus pushed the basketball and you got easy baskets in transition and she played about as well as you can play over a couple minutes spell. Yeah, uh, and that's what we were preaching early. Uh, you know, we got a little complacent and they do such a great job extending that 2-3 and, and pushing you out. Uh, we wanted to attack it, but we don't, we don't practice it. We don't <laughs> play it. Scott doesn't play it at all. So we don't play it much at practice. So it's, it's just a different monster when you try and – prep that a day or two with the JV as opposed to going with your bar, with the, you know another team that runs primarily a 2-3. Um, I thought Kaylin did a good job. She got loose. We were able to hit some people on the low block and then uh, unfortunately you know we kind of they pressured us and sped us up a little bit. She got two quick turnovers out of that at the end of the game but at least we were still attacking and by then we had already made that distance so they didn't hurt us as much. Coach final question. You're 5-0 now halfway through the conference season. Only undefeated team in the conference. Got to be a good feeling heading into the middle part of January into February. Well it is. You, you know every year I've coached you always circle the bath game because you figure you got to beat bath if you want to win the league and, and that's pretty much the way it's been. 
Um, we were fortunate enough to sneak out of St. Mary's with a hard-fought win. They played us great. Um, so, you know, to come into, you know, it seems like we got all the hard games on the road this year. So we'll take that. It's, you know, it's build us for tournament, but we still want to get through the WBL. And, you know, we still got a couple of opponents we got to we got to prepare for. Congratulations, Coach. Appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. All right, I'm going to be joined by Evan Skilder. Evan, your thoughts on this game this evening and, and how OG pulled this one out? We talked in pregame about the pressure and how tough that's going to be for Bat to handle. I was really impressed by what they were able to do against this defense. But ultimately, you heard Coach say it. They wanted that uh, that depth to probably turn the page or turn the tables a little bit earlier than it did. But down the stretch, they did a really nice job continuing to rotate players in and out. Ottawa Glendorf led in scoring tonight. Carson Erford had 10, but they got 11 from Katie Kaufman, 10 from Caitlin Kimmett, 6 from Mike Aldridge, 4 from Carly Brinkman. That's the balance we talked about in your pregame, and it certainly showed up there this evening. Yeah, they moved the ball around so well. They moved it around the perimeter. We saw a couple times they got trapped at the top of that zone right around the free throw line, but they did a nice job adjusting. They, we talked about them getting the ball down to the corner, getting some open looks, and then ultimately pounding it inside with Katie Kaufman, who really took advantage of some tired legs. Basket had dropped to 3-2 and two in the conference. They were led in scoring night by Elena Oliver. Rachel Clark had 11, Ann Oliver 6, Faith Clark with 3. It's still a very good bath basketball team going to be very competitive through the rest of the season. Yeah, and they know they're going to have to play tough games like this, right? Especially when you get into the playoffs and you start to get a little bit further down the road. And so it's good to play games like this. It's obviously not fun to lose, <laughs> yeah. but when you lose a game against a really good team, there's a lot you can take away from it. There's some good film that they can watch and really learn what they have to do. And then again, every game you play, you get a little bit more wind going into yeah. the next one, right? You get your legs under you a little bit more. So. It's a tough season for a team that doesn't have a ton of depth, but really impressed by the way they played. They play a hard-nosed style of basketball. They have a lot of different players that can contribute. All right, we want to thank our sponsorship this evening. That has been Ultimate Outdoor Ohio and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus and in Wapak. Our crew this evening, Megan Sherry, Mia Wada, Waddle, Kelsey Beimer, and also back at the station, Megan Shea is going to edit all, this all back together too. And we have been able, fortunate to be with the athletic director this evening, Kristen Holt from Bath. But the Ottawa Grand of Lady Titans will be undefeated in conference play. They will take a 41-34 win over the Bath Wild Kittens. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.